After decades of failed engagement, the US is steadily losing its influence in the Middle East. As I reported earlier this week, China just brokered a peace deal between Iran and Saudi Arabia, and now China is enacting its master plan to dominate and transform the region in its own image. In recent years, China has been eager to secure its energy security for the next century and sees the Middle East and its abundance of oil and natural gas as key to achieving this. As a result, China's trade with the Middle East has absolutely exploded and now dwarfs that of the United States. Today, China is the nation's biggest foreign investor and the biggest trading partner for the oil-rich Gulf nations. What's even more revealing? Virtually all of the Middle Eastern nations are now members of China's Belt and Road Initiative, the BRI. Just last year, 57% of all BRI funding went to the Middle East, with Saudi Arabia topping the global rankings with $5.5 billion in Chinese investments received. Meanwhile, China is now the Middle East's biggest energy customer, with around 40% of its energy-related imports coming from the region. In short, China's economic presence and ties with the region have surged, and this shows no signs of slowing. But has China's engagement with the Middle East helped achieve its long-term goals, or is China only interested in getting its hands on the region's oil? In particular, what? if anything, has engagement with China done for everyday people in the Middle East. If you listen to Western media, China's involvement in the region is often branded as neocolonialism and an exploitative debt trap. Critics will argue that China's ambition is to deplete the region of its natural wealth without any consideration for its people or its future. But in this video, I'm going to reveal the truth about what China's heavy engagement has done to the region, in particular, the local people. Make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video while I'll reveal how a single Chinese project in one Middle Eastern city directly impacts the lives of millions of Muslims around the world. Let's jump right into the critical issue the Middle East faces. For decades, the region has been on an ambitious mission to transform from an underdeveloped, war-torn area into an advanced, industrialized economy and major trade and tech hub connecting Europe, Asia, and Africa. To this purpose, several nations in the region have announced massive nationwide development plans aimed at fulfilling this aspiration. For example, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, UAE, Iraq, Egypt, and Kuwait have all announced their own Vision 2030 initiatives, which will fundamentally transform their nations from the ground up. But here is where it gets very interesting. A common and central goal among these initiatives is to become less dependent on oil exports and diversify their economy towards other sources of income. This is because for decades, oil-rich nations in the Middle East have been heavily dependent on oil to grow their economies. In fact, for nations such as Saudi Arabia and Iraq, oil reserves account for almost half of their GDP. While such vast oil endowments have certainly made them rich and are in many ways a blessing, it's actually a double-edged sword in what is known as the resource curse. The more your economy depends on oil reserves, the more it is at the mercy of global oil prices, which have known to be very volatile. In light of this, the next fact might shock you. China has already become the main business partner in many of these ambitious initiatives. That's right, the Middle East's biggest oil customer is helping it reduce its oil dependency. If China was only interested in obtaining its oil and nothing else, this simply would not happen. To prove this, we need to look no further than Saudi Arabia, the largest economy in the Middle East and one of the world's biggest oil producers. China is not only Saudi Arabia's biggest trading partner, but also its largest oil customer, buying over a quarter of the country's oil exports. However, contrary to popular belief in the West, the ties between China and Saudi Arabia extend far beyond just oil. Just last December, Chinese President Xi Jinping visited Saudi Arabia to meet with the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Mohammed bin Salman, and the two nations officially established the highest level partnership possible, a so-called Comprehensive Strategic Partnership. This landmark agreement formalized extensive cooperation between Saudi Arabia's own Vision 2030 and the Belt and Road Initiative. It was also accompanied by 34 other investment deals spanning virtually every key sector imaginable, including clean energy, housing, transportation, infrastructure, and 5G development. As Jason Tuvey, an economist at London-based Capital Economics reveals, Saudi Arabia sees China as its main growth engine 
at a time when demand for oil in many developed markets is falling. Saudi Vision 2030 is perhaps the most ambitious of its kind in the region, as it involves several enormous giga projects whose planned investments exceed $10 billion. Like other such initiatives in the region, the central goal is to diversify the economy away from oil revenues. Despite this, China is still poised to be the main business partner involved. The biggest of these giga projects is Saudi Arabia's plan to build a futuristic, smart megacity from scratch. Named Neom, it'll be 33 times the size of New York City and will be powered exclusively by renewable energies. As a result, this is one of the most ambitious, innovative projects ever conceived. The Saudis plan to turn Neom into a new economic zone and emulate the success of Shenzhen, an economic zone built from scratch and which has already surpassed neighboring cities Hong Kong and Guangzhou in terms of GDP. The most breathtaking project within this massive zone will be called The Line, which will be a whopping 170 kilometers long, 500 meters high, and only 200 meters wide megastructure meant to house an entire city. This will be one continuous structure with an entirely glass mirror exterior and will be able to accommodate over 1 million residents. This structure will be so massive that it will be clearly visible from space. And if this sounds completely inconceivable, consider that China's state-owned conglomerate, the Power Construction Corporation of China, or Power China has already begun building its foundation. And let's also not forget that China is highly experienced in huge infrastructure projects, including building entire cities and economic zones from scratch, such as Shenzhen, Xiong'an, and Shanghai's glittering financial district, Pudong. Simply put, if there's anyone that can pull off this insane project, it's definitely China. All in all, developers predict the line will generate almost 400,000 new jobs and boost the nation's GDP by some $48 billion. If the case of Saudi Arabia doesn't convince you, the case of Iraq certainly will. Iraq is one of the world's biggest oil producers, closely behind Saudi Arabia. Despite being rich in oil, the country has suffered for decades from crumbling infrastructure due to successive wars and endemic corruption. As a result, Iraq joined the BRI in 2019 with a main goal of upgrading its infrastructure, in addition to diversifying its economy towards non-oil revenues. Fast forward to today, and China has agreed to build 90,000 residential houses, 1,000 health care facilities and upgrade the sewage system in the capital city of Baghdad. What's more, China State Construction Engineering Corporation has signed on to a $370 million project to completely rehabilitate the Nasserai International Airport. This project will include the construction of a new terminal building, an air traffic control building, a cargo building, and a 25-kilometer airport expressway. Furthermore, Power China is building a solar PV park to supply the nation with 2,000 megawatts of clean energy. But it doesn't stop there. Arguably the most impressive agreement reached is the 2021 deal with Chinese companies Power China and Sinotech to build 8,000 schools throughout the country over the next several years. According to UNICEF, this directly addresses one of Iraq's most pressing issues. Decades of conflict and underinvestment in Iraq have destroyed what used to be the best education system in the region. One in every two schools is damaged and needs rehabilitation. There are close to 3.2 million school-aged Iraqi children out of school. This deal, for which construction has already begun, received considerable attention on overseas social media, with many foreign netizens contrasting this with the U.S. fiascos in the country. Many unanimously expressed the phrase, America bombs, while China builds. Through the BRI, China is also involved in several other Vision 2030 initiatives in the Middle East. In Qatar, for example, Chinese companies have already been involved in numerous development projects that have a direct impact on local people. In return, Qatar has become China's second largest source of LNG, that is liquefied natural gas. The ties between these two nations go way back, as Qatar joined the BRI only a year after it was launched. Qatar was also a founding member of the China-led Asia Infrastructure Investment Bank. For example, China Harbor Engineering Company played a major role in the construction of Haman Port, which is now the country's main seaport and one of the largest in the Middle East. This port is a major part of Qatar's Vision 2030 and has boosted the country's trade worldwide and helped diversify its economy as a result. China has also worked on Qatar's Mega Reservoirs Project, a network of five massive potable water reservoirs that can provide a strategic water supply to the entire population for seven days in case of a water emergency. Furthermore, Thanks to the Chinese tech company Huawei, in 2018, Qatar became the first nation in the world to launch a nationwide 
live 5G network, which now covers 90% of the country's populated areas. This network played a central role in the success of the FIFA World Cup held in Qatar last year. This kind of Chinese engagement that directly impacts local populations can be seen almost everywhere across the Middle East. In Egypt, for example, China's State Construction Engineering Corporation has been awarded a contract to build the entire central business district of the country's new administrative capital, which is slated to be home to over 30 skyscrapers, including the iconic tower, which will be the largest skyscraper of the African continent. This is predicted to create hundreds of thousands of new jobs, as well as attract foreign investment, which will be crucial in supporting Egypt's booming population of 110 million people. Egypt and China's relationship again goes way back, with Egypt being one of the first countries in the world to join the BRI, and China being one of the only countries to provide financial support following instability from the 2011 Arab Spring protests. I'll leave you with a compelling final example that has directly impacted the lives of millions of Muslims across the world, and it's likely not what you expect. It involves the Saudi Arabian city of Mecca, which is considered the holiest city in Islam. In 2010, China Railway Construction Corporation finished building the Mecca Metro. This light rail was built specifically to ease the severe traffic congestion on the roads during the Hajj, which is an annual Islamic pilgrimage to Mecca. It links three main Hajj destinations and thus provides a convenient transportation option for Muslim pilgrims. Every year, the rail conveniently transports millions of pilgrims between holy sites during the five days of Hajj. It has been described by many pilgrims as nothing short of a revolutionary upgrade. Furthermore, this is actually part of a much larger project aimed at easing pilgrim traffic. The much larger Haramain high-speed rail project, finished in 2018, connects Islam's holiest city Mecca with its second holiest city, Medina. The 450-kilometer high-speed railway is designed to carry 60 million passengers a year and cuts travel time between the two cities to under two hours, down from six hours by bus. Simply put, this Chinese project directly benefits millions of Muslim pilgrims every year and facilitates their religious devotion to the holiest of cities. In conclusion, the simple truth is that while China is indeed keen to access the region's resources to secure its energy needs, Middle Eastern countries are just as eager to partner with China to receive its capital and gain access to its deep technology and development expertise. Most importantly, the Middle East has now pivoted away from the United States and towards China for these partnerships. The reason for this is quite simple. Due to decades of poor engagement by the United States, not to mention its invasion of Iraq and Afghanistan, and involvement in several other devastating conflicts that have destabilized large parts of the Middle East to this day, many Middle Eastern countries have become disillusioned with the U.S. true intentions. By contrast, China's policy of non-interventionism and pursuing win-win scenarios is a breath of fresh air for the region. As a result, the Middle East now looks to China for the foreign investment and expertise it needs to advance. But don't take it from me. According to established research institutions, such as the Pew Research Center and the Arab Barometer from Princeton University, the majority of political elites and the general public in the Middle East perceive China's engagement in the region positively, and unlike Western investment, it does not come with any strings attached or evoke memories of the region's colonial past. In addition, what they found particularly attractive is that unlike the US or EU, China does not interfere in the internal affairs or stipulate that democracy has to be a precondition for investment. Just remember, Western media will portray China as a predatory lender who is only interested in seizing the Middle East oil. But as I've outlined in today's video, the reality of the situation is much different. China is a peacemaker, investor, and key economic partner for the region, something the United States has never had an interest in becoming. Everyone, I want to thank you for making it to this point in the video, and I hope you enjoyed this deep dive analysis into the Belt and Road Project in the Middle East. As you can see from these many examples, there is a tremendous amount of involvement, and this is why over 149 countries around the world have signed up to China's Belt and Road Initiative. If you're interested in learning more about the BRI, make sure that you click this playlist and watch all the videos that we've done on the Belt and Road Initiatives. My name is Cyrus Jansen. I want to thank you so much for spending time with me here on YouTube, and I look forward to seeing you all in our next video soon.